Howdy everybody. How are you today? Bob Langston from the North Carolina Zoo. Mr. Bob, your neighborhood naturalist. Appreciate you inviting me in to spend a little time with you once again today. And a couple of interesting things that we're going to show you today. Um, nature has an interesting habit of imitating things. There's a classic statement that says, nature imitates art, or art imitates nature, art imitates life, and everything like that. But nature itself is filled with mimics. Animals, plants that look like other animals and plants. Sometimes we have insects that look like plants. There are walking sticks, there are leaf looking bugs and things like that. So today, uh, I'm gonna introduce you to one of the more showy and flashy mimics that we find around and about. Earlier in the week, I took the opportunity to travel down to one of the pollinator gardens. This is the Solar Point Monarch Way Station down at the North Carolina Zoo. Going to start off with a little bit of diversity, talking about lots of different kinds of things. And from there, I'm going to introduce you to one of my absolute favorite, favorite insect mimics. So stick with me for a few minutes. We're going to go take a little trip and see what things look like when they don't look exactly like they're supposed to. Come on. So we've taken a little travel down to the Monarch Way Station. This one is located at Solar Point. It's adjacent to the North America parking lot down at the North Carolina Zoo. Hopefully this particular video doesn't give anyone with melissophobia the willies. Melissophobia, sometimes called apophobia, is the fear of bees. If you look, you'll see all kinds of bees pollinating this particular plant. They're flying around eating the nectar that's down inside the flower blossom and along the way collecting pollen, which they'll carry from plant to plant to plant. I usually check in with my ace number one plant person, giving a shout out to Charity Cox Cole, who helps me identify plants. Unfortunately today, I did not uh, do that, so I can't tell you exactly what this particular plant is. But let's see who else is enjoying a meal. On this particular day, the first two mimics, or look-alikes I happened to run into, were carpenter bees and bumblebees. It's really hard sometimes for uh, people to tell them apart unless you can see them side by side. The carpenter bees are the largest of the bees in North Carolina, so they're the bigger ones. Bumblebees, a little bit smaller, but they're both sort of short, squatty, stout-looking bees. Both of them have dark heads. Their uh, thorax, or midsection, where the wings are attached, are uh, covered in sort of a greenish, yellowish hair, and their abdomen, or the tail end, is covered in sort of a dark hair. The bumblebees in North Carolina, at least in the Piedmont, most of the time they do not have stripedy uh, abdomens. So they're both the, they look sort of similar. The best ways to tell them apart sometimes is get close enough that you can see their heads. Carpenter bees, because they tend to dig into wood and they chew up wood a lot, they have a really wide head relative to the rest of their body, but a very short mouth. Bumblebees, because they are nectar feeders, typically have these long mouth parts and their head is much, much narrower relative to the size of their body. Now, if you can see them up close, one of the things to note is the fact that the carpenter bees have darker wings than the bumblebees. Bumblebee wings are almost clear. This lovely flying creature may look like some of the bees. It may even look like a hummingbird. These guys are sometimes referred to as hummingbird moths. They're sometimes referred to as bumblebee moths. They're sometimes referred to as sphinx moths, hawk moths. They have lots of different names. This one in particular is what's called a clear wing hummingbird moth. I mentioned they don't look like other moths because their wings are much smaller relative to their body size. They are day flyers. That means that they don't act like some of the moths that are out at night. They mimic hummingbirds. They mimic bees. They look a lot like hummingbirds. It looks like they have a single eye up in the front, but that's actually a compound eye. So that's one of the interesting things about them. By flying during the day, they're able to avoid some of their predators. Bats and owls like to eat moths, and they'll eat these guys as well. Since they're out during the day, when bats and owls aren't necessarily as active, they can sort of uh, 
survive a little bit better. Now, by flying during the day, they do have to worry about other birds, such as uh, blue jays and crows, sometimes some small hawks, but because they look more like a hummingbird, chances are that's one of the things that helps, uh, helps them to live a little bit longer. And the adults can live for up to about seven months. The, uh, during the summertime, the adults are laying eggs. The eggs will grow in the ground, and uh, when they come out, they'll form a chrysalis before the weather gets cold, and they'll sort of uh, hide in various things. Just as an example, they will uh, hide in uh, piles of leaf litter. That's one of their survival techniques. The caterpillars are what we call tobacco and uh, tomato hornworms. They're kind of green, and they have a spike on their tail. That's one of their interesting little things that they do. Observe as you watch this guy fly. Here's an easy way to tell them apart. They have antenna. Hummingbirds do not have antenna. That's a great way to tell them apart. Uh, bees, they're much, much larger than bees. One of the other ways you can tell them apart, look for the legs. Remember, insects have six legs, and you'll see six legs on this guy right here. So what do you think? A really cool mimic? It doesn't really matter if you call them bumblebee moths, hawk moths, sphinx moths, or if you go with the name the clear wing hummingbird moth. They are really cool mimics, and I'm glad I got a chance to show you that one. Join me again in about a week or so. We'll take another look at some of the more interesting things about nature. And want to mention the North Carolina Zoo is now open to the public. You will need to purchase your tickets online and in advance, make a reservation to come to the park, but we would love to have you join us at some point in the near future. If you want to know more about things that are going on, there are several different ways. You can visit the North Carolina Zoo website at www.nczoo.org, or you can check in with us on social media. Just look for North Carolina Zoo or Adventures in Edzucation. We have lots of other videos several times a week. We're still doing Nature's Classroom. We're also doing our Living with Nature series. So please join us. Check in on some of those. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, for the North Carolina Zoo, I'm Mr. Bob, your neighborhood naturalist. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.